Hey, I'm Sven from the B Music Project. In the last lesson we made our first LB2 plugin, a simple amplifier. Now let's make something bigger, like a synthesizer. But step by step. We will start with a simple oscillator as a sound generator. Then we will add MIDI and polyphony and a graphic user interface and different waveforms and filters. After each lesson we will hold something useful in our hand. After the first lesson, you will get this. No, this is not a joke. We will make a test tone generator which you can use to tune an instrument or for testing other plugins. And we will do this in C++. Let's start. First we duplicate our simple amplifier plugin folder and rename the copy to my test tone. If you missed the last session and therefore don't have this plugin folder, then you can always download it from my GitHub repository linked in the video description. Inside the folder we don't need the binary anymore and remove it. Then we rename the files from my amp to my test tone. First we go to the manifest and replace all my amps to my test tone. And this is really all for the manifest. Now to the metadata in the plugin turtle file. Once again we have to replace my amp by my test tone. Then let's think about what do we need inside the plugin. The plugin doesn't need any audio input as it only generates but not process sound. So we can remove the audio in and add up the port number for audio out which we will keep. And of course we will need some controllers. In the simplest case the sound is defined by its waveform, its frequency and its level. We start with a sine wave, and its frequency and its level will be represented through control ports. So for the first control port we use the internal LV2 symbol Freak and the displayed LV2 name Frequency. The default frequency will be 440Hz, feel free to change it to 432 or whatever you want, and we limit the frequency to the audible range of 20 to 20,000 Hz. And we can spice it up like by adding a unit symbol to be shown by a door. And like everything in the turtle language you need a subject, it's anonymous here as we are in squared brackets, a predicate and an object. And where to get these, the predicate and the object? Of course again from the LV2 specifications on lv 2 plugin slash ns. Let's search a bit. Ha! Huh, there are units. There's already an example with a prefix definition. This will make it easier. By scrolling down we come to the interesting part. There's a predicate or property called unit and an object or instance hset. This is what we need. We firstly copy and paste the provided prefix definition. As I'm lazy I also copy and paste the example line with the predicate and an object. I only have to change the object to hset as we have seen it before. Now the door can show the frequency in Hertz if this feature is supported. Another interesting spice would be to have a logarithmic slider for the frequency. Otherwise, all important frequencies would stick on the left side of the scale. This can be done with the LV2 port property predicate from the LV2 core. So we take this. Now we only need an object telling that it's logarithmic. Let's search again in the LV2 specifications. There are the port properties. And there's our object, simply called logarithmic. We only need its prefix. We can easily take it from the web URI in this case and write add prefix, then any symbol, I take pprops and paste the URI. Dot. Then we can add the object pprops logarithmic. And now to our level control port. It will look like the amp control port of our MyAmp plugin. So it's a LV2 import port, comma LV2 control port. Index is 2. Symbol will be level and the display name too. We set the default to 0.1 to not blow our ears and set the limits to 0 and 1. Let's look back to the head of our plugin definition. It's not an amplifier plugin anymore, so we look for something else. I think that oscillator plugin fits best, so we take this. In the first MyAmp tutorial video I said that we didn't provide all the statements to fully describe the plugin, but it will be accepted anyway. We can check using the terminal and the tool lv2lint. 
We type LV Toolint and the URI of our MyAmp plugin. And we see four warnings about a missing license and missing author information. More important, there are two fails due to missing version numbers and we should take care about this. Version numbers are important as a plugin may be stored on different locations with different versions. Only if a version number is provided then the dog can choose the right version, usually the latest one, or may provide an option to select. This is done with a predicate LV2 version minor followed by the minor version number. There are strict rules about the numbering. You can read this in the LV2 specifications. Here we take minor version 2 and micro version 0. But what about the major version number? It's expected to change the plugin URI if the major version number is changed. That's it for the plugin turtle file. Now we can go to the code. As we will switch from C to C++, we will firstly rename the code file from C to CPP. There are lots of differences between C and C++. The most obvious difference are classes for object-oriented programming. Modern C++ also supports programming paradigms including generic and functional. C++ also has got function overloading and exception handling and polymorphism and container data types. But it's also more difficult to write good and clean code in C++ compared to C. Especially for real-time programming, where many of the fancy modern C++ features are forbidden. Therefore, we will start with very classic C++, which still looks a lot alike C. I start with relabeling the C libraries to be included in a more C++ stylish way. So we now include C standard dev, C standard int and C standard lib. And we will need the CMath library for this plugin as we do trigonometric calculations. The class definition in C++ is done with a class keyword, the name of the class and the body of the class. It's similar to a C struct but it can do a lot more. Inside the body we define the variables, called members, of the class. What do we need? Of course the pointers to the ports we will get from connect port. We don't need an audio in pointer anymore, but we keep the audio out pointer. And add freak PTR and level PTR as float pointers for the control ports we defined in the turtle file. C++ also allows to control the visibility of class content. We can declare these only internally used members to be private, so they aren't visible from the outside of the class anymore. The opposite of private is public. And there is also a third statement called protected, but we don't need it here. But we will need some additional data to be stored. Let's think about. The plugin will generate a sine wave based on the frequency and the level we will get from the control ports. But a sine wave is a function of x, a position in time. And there is no time position provided. We can only count samples. But if we know the sample rate, and this is provided by instantiate, then we can calculate the time position. So we store the sample rate as double. This is a float with a double precision. Short rule, use double for time data and highly processed audio signals like filter buffers, but float will be sufficient for all other audio signals. And no asterisk, as we directly store the value and don't use a pointer. And the same for position. In the public part we put everything that should be accessible from the outside, like the constructor. The constructor is called when the object will be created on the base of this class definition. The constructor has got the same name like the class, and you can define parameters to be passed to the constructor. We will later call this constructor from instantiate and pass this sample rate. The opposite of a constructor is the destructor. It's called by tilde class name. It will be called at the end of the lifetime of an object in our case from cleanup. And then we should also define class functions, also known as methods, for each of the other core methods we need, with their relevant parameters. These are connect port with the parameters unsigned int 33 pits, port and void pointer data location. Activate without parameters, run with sample count and deactivate without parameters. Following this class declaration we can define what the method should do. This is best done outside the declaration body. And the syntax is similar to the usual function definition as we know from C. It will be return type, class name, double colon, method name, parameters in parentheses and the body in curly brackets. In simple cases. Constructors are a bit special. Constructors, as well as destructors, don't have any return type, if not void and constructors allow to set members and execute code even before the body. 
This is done by a colon, followed by the respective member initialization after the parameters block. So we type my test tone, double colon, my test tone, and the parameters as declared above, and then the colon. We have to initialize the members in the order of declaration. So we initialize audio out PTR as null pointer, this is C++, freak PTR as null pointer, level PTR as null pointer, rate with sample rate, which we get passed through, and position with 0.0. And there's nothing more to do inside the body, so we can leave it empty. And as there will also be nothing inside the destructor, we can remove our declaration. Then the compiler will use a default destructor, and this is the first choice in C++. Lazy me, I copy the head of the connect port from the declarations and add the class name plus the double colon. The inside of the body looks the same as the connect port for the Mayan plugin. We don't have to check the instance pointer, as there is nothing like this. The object methods are already linked to the object. So we can type switch port and then define the conditions. Port 0 is audio out as defined in the turtle file. So we set audio out PTR to the data location pointer cassette to a float pointer. There's also a preferred other way of typecasting in modern C++, but I will keep this for later videos. For port 1 we have to set the freak PTR to data location and for port 2 we set the level PTR to data location. All other port values will be caught by default, but this shouldn't happen. The next core method to define is activate. We only set the position to 0.0. And as there is nothing to do in deactivate, we can remove the declaration. The run method is called with a parameter sample count. Inside we calculate the audio data sample by sample, within a for loop. But first we have to check if all ports are connected, as we did in Mayam. If one of audio out PTR or freak PTR or level PTR is still a null pointer, then the program should return from run immediately, without sample generation. For UI33TI is 0, I lower than sample count increment I. Inside we set each sample of the buffer where audio out PTR points to. And as pointers and C arrays are also handled in C++ in the same way, we can set audio out PTR indexed by i to the sign of 2 times pi times position as we know from mathematics in the school. And the position itself has to be increased by frequency divided by rate for each sample iteration. So we can type position plus is asterisk freak PTR divided by rate where position plus is, is a shortcut for position, is position plus. And then we have to take into account the level, by multiplying our output by asterisk level PDR. As you see, I still kept the internal core methods block. They exist outside an object and I will use them to call their respective object methods. In the case of instantiate, we will generate a new instance, the object, by calling its constructor with the keyword new, and the parameter sample rate we get from the door, and pass this to m, and return m. In connect port we keep the typecasting but change the condition. If m is set, this means different from null pointer, then we call connect port of the object where m points to. We already know that the error operator exactly means this. And as all the rest is already done in the object method, we don't need to do anything more here. We copy this code block as we can use it for other functions. Like here in activate where we replace connect port by activate without parameters. The same in run where we replace connect port by run and pass the sample count. Deactivate is still not needed. Cleanup has to call the destructor. This is done by the keyword delete. So we pass the copied block again and replace connect port by delete m. Inside the descriptor we only need to adapt the plugin URI. And we have to label our interface function to be in C by extern C and fix the order of statements. Then it's done. Time to compile. I use the terminal command we used the last time but replace gcc by g++ for the C++ compiler and also change the source code file to mytestone.cpp and the output file to mytestone.so. No errors. 
Once again we create a new directory inside one of the lv2 folders, like the hidden .lv2 folder of your home directory, and call the new directory mytestone.lv2. Copy and paste the binary plus the two TTL files into this new directory. And call jar with the plugin URI. There it is. It works, but you also hear clicking artifacts if you move the sliders. Homework. Think about why. Also watch the other videos in this series. For more information take a look into the LV2 tutorial GitHub repository.